Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, Jada Kiss. What's up, y'all? What's Peace, up, Kiss? King. How y'all doing, man? You put out another stellar body of work. <clears throat> Um, I can't mm -hmm. even pronounce the title, and I don't even want to disrespect it because I know it has a lot of significance to you. Ignatius. Okay, and what, what what is the meaning behind that? The 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 real meaning, and if you Google it or you know any of that, is the the fiery one or the fiery one. I haven't even pronounced that word, but mm -hmm. um, it's actually my man Ice Pig J's first name. I always used to tease him about it. Um, told him his pops wanted must have wanted him to be a pimp. <laughs> or something with the name Ignatius is always ill to me, but um, yeah, he lost. We lost him from colon cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, if everybody know him, he was the Rough Rider A and R. He worked on all the Rough Rider compilations, all of my albums, all the X albums, Eve, Drag On, the whole camp. Um, then after D had the accident, I kind of hired him to work with me. We we um. He started the So Raspy label and the website, and you know he was just still a and all my projects. Uh, he was made me lose weight, made me start working out, um, got me into art. He just was a a rare individual that's it's hard to find. You know what I mean on your entourage and your staff that was very sincere and genuine and really cared about the brand and. Didn't matter. He just wanted to get it done. Whether it was for me to lock Styles, Luch, whatever was the cause, he was he was the guy to go get the verse or go get the production or whatever we needed done. And um, you know, losing him was a big hit to my everyday activities, my career, everything. You know, the reason I did this project is because I was like the last person to actually found out. He didn't want me to know. He made everybody that was with him, Steve O and Royce and the people that was, you know, taking him to the doctors and trying to help him out. He 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 made them curve me totally and he spun me when I speak to him. He would just tell me something, just threw me off. Like and I ain't really realize it till after he was gone. Mm -hmm. But um When did you find out? When did he when did he tell they, you? Look. He's going through all. I don't know. He's. I don't know what's going on. He's spinning me. Shaka told me. Shout out to my girl Shaka, mm. Rock Nation. She Shaka. like yo. What up, Shaka? I don't know if you know. You know what I mean? And she came in the office and told me and Christy. Then I was like, what? Then I. Then one. Then they had to tell me because it's like I called them like yo. Is this? You know what I'm saying. Then they let me go see him. He was smaller. He was. He wasn't the pick that I knew. You know what I mean? Then he died. The next day, so he was yeah. hiding from you and everything. Like, you yeah, know? yeah, he was. They was. They totally had me out of the. You know what I mean? I I went from speaking to him every morning to, you know what I mean? They didn't want me to know. So when I found out, then he passed away. Either the next day or the day after, 24, 48 hours after them let me go to the hospital and mm -hmm. see him, he passed away. So after the um, he gave him a great service and. He had a, you know, we had something at the Apollo and the funeral and the service was beautiful, but it still didn't, it still wasn't sitting right with me because mm -hmm. I, I found out late, so it's still, you know what I mean? It was weighing on me heavy. Then you get to have him last days. Yeah, last it was so much stuff I needed to ask him. Yeah. I had jury in his crib. I had his money. Is is a whole bunch of this stuff I needed to have one more talk with him. That you know what I mean? I felt. I got deprived of it, so. Um, Did y'all get to talk at all in the hospital that time? Nah, he was when by the time I seen him, he was down. He was Damn. he was sedated, and he was you know what I mean. Mm. He couldn't talk or none of that. And he was a um, super healthy brother. He was one of the strongest dudes I ever mm -hmm. encountered. He right. could he would ride his mountain bike to Brooklyn. He played ball every weekend. He drink nasty. He would juice <laughs> watercress in his crib, drink it, and <laughs> go running and all that. But I think it was inherited. You know what I mean? For mm -hmm. it was in the inheritance, inheritance thing, but um, yeah. So the way for me, I felt to have some sense of closure or get over it was to do this body of work, a mm -hmm. project for him in his name. Um, 
I try to do a lot of the features that he would always be in my ear. Yo, when you gonna work with this person? I need you to do a song with this person. That was the, the Pusha um, joint. He wanted you to work with Pusha. Yeah, Push, John Legend, mm -hmm. um, Two Chains. He was a big fan of Two Chain. He loved his voice and he loved how he put his bars together. Um, Dej Loaf, he loved Dej something about her sonically that he used to listen you to. You got her like, sonic right on um, Government Cheese. Good looking. And um, even down to the cover, art is a painting. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the artist BK. That I actually, he was teaching me about art. I actually did a painting that me and my man Seth Free going to put it in an art show and give some of the proceeds to his children. So after this is like, a, like my urn or my laminated eulogy that they give you when you go, you know, I could put it on the, this wall, the mantle, and get back in the regular. It's like he basically a and would this project. Yeah, he a and would it from heaven, exactly. Did you hear him? Like when you was in the studio recording? It, like it, it was, it, this was the scariest thing with making this project. Um, shout out to Buddha and Grands and Poobs and my other man that played the keys. I call him Golden, Golden Hands, but um, this is the first album that I actually did a lot of post-production, like had live instruments come in and played and all of that type of stuff. The samples, all of them replayed over live and just real musical. And that's something that he always wanted. He would always try to get me to do it. My, you know, I would be like, nah, come on, man, just keep it like this. He'd be like, nah, you gotta do this. So I kind of did all the stuff he ever asked me to do you know, when he was alive, just little stuff. I took it all and tried to do everything he ever asked me and just do that. What's one yeah. thing that you hear him say over and over again? That's something that you'd be like, that's pick. For me to sing, he wanted me to use my voice more. Mm -hmm. You got to use your voice, B. You do the hook. Don't call nobody. Just sing it. They want to hear that. Come on, B. <laughs> That's you on the intro, right? You see? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's me singing on the two chains joint and on um keep it one hundred. How'd it feel for you? you think? It felt good. It felt it felt good. You know what I mean? I, I wish he could have been here to 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 go through the process, but you know, I felt like I made him proud. You know what I mean? And that's that's all I wanted to do. And that's a very good body of work. I'm not gonna lie, I hear a lot of organic love songs on this project, Jada. Not the yeah. not, not the kind of records yeah, yeah. you make for like that because I, I need a, you need a radio record. Like I'm like I think Jada really into somebody. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. Just even with the passing of pick, kind of helped me get my family, my whole thing down. You know what I mean? I I moved out of Yonkers and got a got a house and got you know. My my family situation is really in a good space right now. So you can hear it. You can hear it in them songs. And um, I think it's all due to him. Like they, you, you always hear something. Some everything happens for a reason, or you know, sometimes you get a a positive out of a negative, or mm -hmm. yeah. you make a good situation out of a traumatic event, or you know, things of that nature. And that's just what's happening. Like that's all he ever wanted to see was. Me, Styles, and Sheik, um, you know, just evolve and, and and be good fathers and good artists and open up juice bars and go to art events and, you know what I mean, things like that. And people like him come a dime a dozen, you know? <coughs> the joint me, that's that's live instrumentation too? Or you said it, No, you that's Brian sample? Michael Cox. He okay. was, he just ill, you know, he's a different, mm -hmm. it's a, you know, it's a, it's a level of, Producers and he already, you know, Grammys and all that type of stuff is is the norm for him. He got a, mm -hmm. and um, he actually was eager to work with me as I was to work with him because you know he do the R and B thing and he done so much Usher and Mariah and um his I guess he one of his bucket lists was to do some hip hop. You know what I mean? And so when I got to, he actually made that beat live on his gram on his Instagram. Story. He had some that he, he used to make a beat live once a week. Mm -hmm. I actually happened to be the first person to catch it 
when he was making it and I hit my man Bart in Atlanta like yo could you hit Brian Michael Cox for me and tell him I want that beat and he hit him he like yeah Kiss I get it and um he actually got the same publisher as Peebo Bryson so he like I, I handled the uh, clearance and all that the sample I got that so I was definitely with that Me that's hard. always that's a, a problem mm -hmm. good looking you know what's interesting I was watching you talk with It's The Real and you were talking about how Ice Pick J was a jeweler yeah. for you first and then I think it's great how you kind of also while he was helping with your career you helped him really live his dreams because it felt like his dream was really to be in the music business and doing what he was doing with you and so you were able to actually help him achieve that and I think that's an amazing thing we yeah. have people around us sometimes that have something different that they're doing but they might have talents elsewhere mm -hmm. and to have somebody around you that you can trust and then help him develop, develop his skill and talent in something else that he really cared about. I think that was something that I'm sure impacted his life tremendously. Yeah, his, his story is ill, because I, I used to hate him at first when I was a teenager, and D used to bring us to the Mart on <laughs> 125th, and he was behind the counter at Black Man's Jewelers with my man Blue. And I thought it was, a, I thought it was like a story. I thought they were selling drugs. I thought it was <laughs> a front. I, yeah, I'm like, what do you mean? Black man jewelers. And then he would actually go down to the district and make the moldings. And he knew about quality of diamonds and gold. And he was really a jeweler. Like, So that's where the name Ice Pick came from. But um, that kind of attracted me to him also as like a young teenager going to the mart with D. And like, this guy Jay is back there. And he's... He's calling himself a jeweler. I'm seeing him fix pieces and work, and people coming and see him. But it, it's something funny with that. But he, <laughs> was, he was really a jeweler, like you know what I mean. Then come to find out, Big got some of his first jewelry from there, and Puff, and you know what I mean. It's, it's real. There's a lot of history there. And mm -hmm. then as when Rough Riders hired him to be the A and R, and he start working, it was just natural for him to, you know what I mean. You give him the money, and he go make the Rough Rider pieces or you want to get a new Roly, pick would go get it because he would get the good prices and he'd come back, you know, box, papers, everything. He, he went, when you took him to Jacob, he was just like one of Jacob's nephews or brothers. He They could never get over on him because he knew just as much as the jewelers, you know what I mean? Now, you pushed the album back uh, a week. Yeah. Now, now, what was the reason for that? I uh, pushed it back a week Dude, just due to the whole Pop Smoke thing and also the Kobe Memorial. Um, actually, at the time in that all of that happened, we was about to let out hunting season in the video, and the video is very gory and bloody, and it's, it's arts. It's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets. Art Basil. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, you know using I mean? the blood as paint? Yeah, because yeah, actually, with the whole thing, I had two, I, I narrowed it down to two treatments. And um, I sent it to Push, thinking he was going to like the other treatment. He like, nah, I like this one. I'm like, Push, you want you want blood and all? He's like, yeah, let's I do this that. one. <laughs> so we shot that one. And then. Um, What'd y'all shoot it? We shot in uh, New Jersey. Mm hmm. One of them nice mansions you know, somewhere, mm -hmm. probably not too far from your your big old mansion. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, when we was, when we scheduled to release the video and the song is the same time, you know, the, we got the news that the thing and Pop Smoke got killed, and then it was the Kobe Memorial. So it just wasn't. I didn't feel it was appropriate or tasteful, and mm -hmm. I just thought it was an honorable thing to do. You know, what I mean, life is way bigger than music, even though you need music for life to sometime help you with life but um right. just thought it wasn't appropriate and then pushed it back a week labels hate when i ask this question but what's the point of being signed to a major label at this point like what can def jam really do for you kids? really right now i don't know how i'm feeling right now <laughs> i might be going in the after this one baby Why you they feeling like that? i'm going through a lot of you know i'm so easy to work with it becomes like they take it for granted. My, yeah, a little bit. And I and I don't I don't say that with no malice cuz I appreciate everybody that goes balls to the wall for me. They they go hard for me. A like a nice majority of them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They passionate about me and is is deeper than music. They we work good with each other and I appreciate it. But sometimes I'm so 
I'm not one of them diva artists that need all green M and M's, a white love <laughs> seed, the uh, burn candles before I get to. The, I ain't one of them. So sometimes it's like, you know, I had to do, I had to do a show today. I walked there with my with my with my uh, overnight bag. I got to leave here, do a few more, no breakfast. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, just a lot of stuff that they wouldn't do to other artists that they they feeling comfortable doing to me, and I, you know what I mean? I, and, and, you know. And this your last? This your last album there? I don't know, man. I got to <laughs> first. I, we got to see who's who who um becomes president. Comes president. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm voting for L. A. Reid back. L.A. Reed? L.A. Reed. I need L.A. Reed. If anybody find, if anybody's out there listening. I need L.A. Reed. You want some new energy, though? Like, like I need L.A. Reed. <laughs> L.A. Reed. What about J. Brown? Or I Ty take Ty. J. Brown. I take any of them. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. I already know that L.A. Reed gives the bread out. <laughs> L.A. Reed does the right thing with the money. Those days are over, though, don't you think? The money is still there. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. put L.A. back in the office and <laughs> let them say yes. To, when you ask them for... To more money. Yeah, we always hear about how L.A. Reid really <laughs> lets creatives be creative also. Well, I love L.A. Reid. He <laughs> never told me no. Right. All you got to do is wear a nice sweater. <laughs> Don't let him have a nice sweater. You def- it's definitely, <laughs> the deal is definitely going through. <laughs> One of them Lenny Kravitz with the ruffle up. <laughs> Come with this sweater that looked like the scarf is on the sweater. You good, dog? You know what I mean? I, I miss them days, but nah, that jam is cool. The the difference for me is, I'm I became spoiled. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of dudes take independent for granted and think mm-hmm. it's easy because they see the dudes down bottom do it, but they've done invested a lot of money. This All is right. kingpins that clean themselves up and and doing this record thing full-fledged. So it's not just about you got the ability to go in the studio and make some songs and think you're just going to upload them to, to right. the platforms. It's, that's not, it's not that easy. You you actually have to work double time when you're independent. And you know it can't what I mean? be just you either. You, you have need to have a nice a staff. Team. You need a formula, a system, a team. You're going to have to spend a lot of your own money mm-hmm. a lot of the times. You're going to have to do, you're going to have to be places that you're not necessarily, sometimes you're just going to have to show up to C-I-double-A or the Grammys or some mm-hmm. of that stuff. And it's you have to, f- yeah, you know what I mean? It's not easy at all. And some dudes get that misconstrued. And I think sometimes people pretend they're independent, but they're really not. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. will be like, oh. I mean, I'm- yeah, it's, it's, they take that word for granted. That mm-hmm. is dead serious to be an independent artist. It takes a lot of work. So would you, you know tell a new artist to sign to a major nowadays? It depends on what you're signing, because mm-hmm. you don't get what you ask for, you get what you negotiate. Right. You know what I mean? And a lot of times, these young dudes, you can wave something in front of them, and they, you know, some of them will jump. You know what I mean? And, and we it talk depends about on if you style, have a yeah. great manager, if you have a great yeah. person working radio, do you have access to those you people? Need that. You, you, know need a you, need? Guy, you need a guy, you need a very, yeah. staff. you need a nice staff of people that's for the cause, that know what they're doing, um, playing their part, and everybody's moving accordingly. Your relationships, if you don't have relationships with anyone. That's more important than anything. I tell the new artists, re- relationships and rapport, rapports are more than money because almost everybody you need to reach out to, they got money. Right. Right. That's like if I needed one of y'all three, y'all already got bread. So when you see my name come across the screen is how much, you know, what's our relationship like? That's going to determine if you even answer, then if you're going to entertain Mm-hmm. What I'm gonna ask you after you answer? So right. think about how many people hit you up on social media or whatever. I got some new music. I got what's gonna make me want to listen to somebody that I have no idea who they are. Now maybe if Jada Kiss is like, oh, there's this artist that signed to me. I think you should give them a shot. We might be like, okay, you know, know I mean? it's a co-sign from this person who I trust. And but know. that's because Jada's telling me. I can't think of the last time somebody from a label said. Yo, this is the next hot artist. I'm gonna check him out. Like usually, those artists bubble up on their own. Oh, or the, people are already. That's the whole new them. thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Is almost, it's almost like every everything's independent. Yeah. Because yeah, opposed yeah, yeah. to them, before you, the artist would have to come hound you. Y'all would leave here and go to y'all car. It'd be 19 <laughs> dudes out there Pour with CDs. Yeah. Please, yo, shout, MVD. But now. 
You go to they they go get a mocha latte or one of them. <laughs> go to their desk and look for a little such and such down little yonder such somewhere. Such. Yeah. <laughs> then they send somebody to have a meeting. And you go know what I mean? You 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 got to create yeah. your own ball of fire yeah. now. And then they just get behind that as before when they had more artist development. They just really try to develop. Somebody's already bubbling now. Mm -hmm. Now we yeah. was talking about uh, Megan Thee Stallion earlier and talking about her contract, mm -hmm. and y'all signed a contract that y'all were trying to get out of it. Different though, different. I think if if our first contract would have came from a major league baseball player, it might it might went a little bit longer. <laughs> she only got ten grand. Well, fit. What do you wow. say? What they he say? said. She said ten grand. He said. He gave her an advance of ten, then he gave her fifty thousand, and he has the receipt for that check. And then he said they invested more money into her. Is that and a good he has receipts. revenge? Sixty thousand kiss back then when you first started. I mean that that kind of event sounds like the kind of events we got <laughs> fifty years ago. So I don't know, but I don't know how fair that is. But then again, we don't know what the we don't know what the terms is. We right. don't know, you know. And this goes back to. I tell young artists and new artists, learn, learn, learn the game as much as you in the studio getting your pen sharp and sharpening your steel. You should try to learn the game as much as you want to be the best producer, the best rapper, so you don't run into things like that. Because at the end of the day, it's our fault, the mm -hmm. artists, when we sign it, or whoever was your manager or whoever your supporting cast, you know what I mean? It, somebody, your lawyer, your mother, somebody should, you should have somebody there to help you. Or you got to just take the fault. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you wait signed it. it. Nobody, unless <laughs> right. they put a gun in your head and made you sign it. You, you know what I mean? You got to try to work it out. But on the journey of working it out, you got to know that that was your fault and to, you know, correct it from there. Did I'm, glad, I'm glad she's getting it early you right. know what I mean that, that's that's what we was able to do jump on things early and start learning it unfortunately after we signed but it was still but early but he didn't have to release you guys he just no he right. didn't that's what I'm saying even mm -hmm. with the whole thing everybody keep asking me about the May situation um we handled it different because we was younger. We was we was we was kids. Y'all threatened them with violence you know I mean? a million times. Yeah. <laughs> and we was throwing chairs. But it worked. That was we'll throw the only refrigerator. Way. We couldn't do no litigation. <laughs> we didn't have money to go to court with them. We would have been broke after one visit. You know what I mean, we would have been to the bone. He got the. And that's how that usually goes. So and that was a risky move for Diddy because imagine everybody would have came. Yeah. And threatened him after you know that what I'm to get out of their contract. But. In in Mace's defense, I'm always for the artist because I'm an artist, mm -hmm. and you know, if you if you see, that's a common thing is happening with Meg. Is right. you know, it's, it seems to be something that somebody started whenever this game started and put the artist at the bottom of the totem totem pole. But and think I think he should be able to. Where we all at in our careers and lives now, I think he could talk to Diddy. But we don't know if he tried that, and his only way to get his only way to get across was to hit sin. You know <laughs> what I mean? So I would just wish they could work it out and then not be a public a public thing. Right. But they, they say Mace owes him a lot of money too, though. You see, it's always yeah. it's always three. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, yeah, just, just for all the advances, yeah. the advances he no, got when no. they renegotiated for the second time. Then when he came back, like you see, it's always yeah. we it's always. When that's what that's the bad thing about when you hit sin, because the people only get to hear your side, and you know what I mean. It's always going to be two other sides. Question: well, Do you think? Go too, guys. You, th or, you think Mace was ever as nice as you, man? Because that's that's been a debate going on for a few years between me and B Dot. That what? Mace was, was ever it? as nice as Kiss. You you was in here. We had these conversations. I did not say that. Cause we was ranking the top five bad boy artists of all time lyrically, right? Right. And we're, let's see what let's, let's I see had, goes. I had uh, Big, Biggie, of course, number one. number one. Kiss number two. I had Kiss two. I had Styles three. I had um, Black Rob four, and I had G Dep five. And you didn't have Mace in the top five. He make him make the list. He gotta be on you the bust. list. I'm talking about this lyric. I'm talking about five, this. I ain't Mace talking about artists. I'm not talking about artists. I'm talking about sales. Nice. I'm just, talking about Mace lyrics. Mace is definitely top five bad yes. boy artists in Absolutely. lyrics. Absolutely. So who's, who's he better? He, he, you think he better than Rob? He thinking of Mace. Black Rip B.O. was Jiggy nice. Mace. He thinking Jiggy Mace. He not thinking he Mace. Mace. No, 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 no. Mace. Mace. Mace gets busy. Mace just wanted. Mace always said when I get 
in. I'm going for the bread. I'm doing all of that shiny I'm shooting. Ladies, I'm yeah? going for the lay. I'm making big records, but he can rhyme his ass off. Know what I mean? So where you rank him? Because I got you. I got big kiss style. I got him on there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> It's only five. He's like, I got to think he about it. In. I got him in the five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't no particular place. <laughs> he's, he's definitely who on is, there. Who is the top the, five then? Not in order, but just who is in rap, the bad boy. In bad boy? Yeah. Just in bad boy. Bad boy at his peak. Oh. And you don't have to put in order, but. The locks, mm-hmm. mace, and big. So that's five. That's my five. Okay. 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 Now, is the locks doing another? I know you got to go. Is the locks doing another album? What's next after this one? You said you had to get this one off your chest. Yeah, after this, we get back into regular scheduled program. Now new locks you? album, new locks documentary. Yeah, we actually shooting the first single on the uh, eighth, I think. Yeah, y'all just celebrated twenty years. We are the streets, right? Yeah, man. Are you? Are that was you a really? Blessing. Are y'all? Everybody's no, really Did you in? just hear me? I'm making sure. We <laughs> scheduled. We got the treatment, and we shooting the new locks first single. All right. It's supposed to be March 8th. It uh, should be anywhere the 8th or the 12th or the 10th or something. But they I got everything. Like, you know Kiss. No, 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 no. We can't. We ain't playing. We got the doc coming okay. and we got the album coming. You ain't answered the question, though. Was Mace ever as nice as you? <laughs> <laughs> he better not say, yeah, you better think you're nicer than everybody. No, he said, was he ever? He didn't say, you know, you got to listen to the, That's right. okay. the DA for district attorney. You got to listen to <laughs> <laughs> Um... <laughs> I think we all responsible for each other's, cause this is how we met Mace. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, when we was little, we, when we was younger, teenagers, we would go every day and be with D, Darren Dean, Rough Rider CEO, and hang with him in Harlem, and and battle all day. They dudes, is, one of his OGs would come. Yo, I got this. I got my man. He nice. He coming from. 130-something, and one chick dude just mm-hmm. coming from the Bronx, Brooklyn, everywhere. We be in front of the Apollo demolishing everybody. So, yes or no? So, no, let me let tell me you. Me <laughs> so, and it, it was landslides where we was doing. <laughs> with, with, when they was bringing these dudes around, we was shredding them. I'm talking about kamikaze ninja sword shred. No, <laughs> no even close. These brother, Swiss's dad, T.D., he came, he said, yo, I got somebody, I'm, cause every, that's what it was. They was just trying to find dudes to take us out. Him, yo, I got somebody. He came back with Mace. Mace had on some Nike sandals, <laughs> feet with his toes out. <laughs> <laughs> he was slim, big jean shorts. So he looked at like a pushover, but he was dumping. Know what I mean? And um, it was close. <laughs> it was the closest of everybody that ever came, and we actually linked up. He started coming to Yonkers every day to Rough mm-hmm. to Powerhouse. That's how songs like Angus Done Started, something got made, and um, all of them kind of songs you were here with all of us, and and then we actually all got signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bad boy. So mm-hmm. we started out Mason. They they used to think he was part of us, like mm-hmm. we was together for years getting nice so you know what I mean I, I he's my brother I will always you know what I mean but as far as you put me in there with anybody I I, I feel like I'm the only one that's gonna come out with somebody's head in my hand even you know big I mean, I mean to, to answer that big our first song you'll see big is talking about us and I'm talking about big you know what I mean oh, you'll see yeah. mm-hmm. wow 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 big's Came because Puff geased it up. Same yeah. way, oh, I got these new young cats from Yonkers. I'm telling you, they're gonna kill you. They're gonna annihilate you. You <laughs> know what I mean? But just making everybody go hard. And then that's when Big came talking it, but ain't living, living it. it. That was for us. That was for so, y'all. Yeah. yeah. And what, oh, was you, line, no, no. What, what was your line back for him? Um, I had, I was throwing, I had the silence on, shooting a lot of shots in that verse. Um, all that big? Screw y'all, I never knew y'all. You clicked me like yellow lights. We running through um, y'all. Custom van. Up north in the custom van. And bust your man. And rub your plan. Now it's back to grand. Man, ain't that something? All left in front. And what you gonna do? Nothing. So let's keep things rationalized. 
everything I write, but it nationalized. I'm in the getting money, twisting honeys. Niggas is buying coops while you on the stoop looking funny. I'm a scorer. Damn, Diddy Bar. Yeah, and that's like that's the first that's that's one of the first rhymes that we that's our first mm -hmm. we actually had a song with Big before we ever met him. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? That's that's an accomplishment. I, um, I was going. I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask you: Have you ever thrown any subs? Because I saw you on For the Record talking about how Styles was dissing Jay on Reservoir Dogs and Biggie was dissing Craig back. We were just like shots. Air. That's how the game was back then, right. and right. it made it. That's what was so golden about the golden era. You know what I mean? It was still love, but it was, it was a competitive blood sport to a certain sense. But the, when a dude called you for a feature, he actually wanted that. You know what I mean? You Social media would have hyped that up so much back then. Yeah. It would have probably got ugly. Like yeah. One of my favorite freestyles is Over the Cream Beat with with Deluxe and Big on the Funk Flex 60 Minutes of Funk Volume 2. That was I listen so to that Ill. shit now. That was a, we was all there. We did that in Daddy's house. I remember that day to the day like it was yesterday. That was a dope day. I remember that. That was, like your, was that your we second time recording? Or? Um. Yeah, yeah, that's what we did that actually before last day. So yeah, that was the second one that we did with Big. Big wasn't playing it's with y'all. Song. I, it's a, when I die, is you gonna hear a version of me on um more money, more problems? I, I heard about that. Um, he said when I die. A couple of songs. So why you say when you die? die. <laughs> Cause you know how this is. This game is crazy. A lot, all type of stuff comes out. Yeah, when I die, they gonna pull out the more money, more problems. We need with to hear that now. Um, why they took you off that? That would have been a good setup for you. I, 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 that I, I don't think the verse was. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't write it with all of the charisma that I wanted to. You write. You was killing people in the song as they put. put Probably, things yeah, it wasn't. It. it didn't match. It was. <laughs> it was water and oil. You know the worst part about guys like you? Cause not the worst part. It's actually the best part. You got a great album out right now. A lot of dope records on there, but your history is so long. It's like when you sit down and talk to you, you want to talk about everything. All kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. you yeah, know what I mean? Nah, that's a good thing, man. That's a good thing. Like, I, cause I know you coached Days Loaf on Government Cheese because I've never heard her sound like that. Like, you did something with her voice that's hear. different. See, we on The Breakfast Club. I got to give y'all the real to real. Um, even though we pushed it back because of Pop Smoke, you know, the untimely the passing of Pop Smoke and the Kobe Memorial, the, some of the other elements of why it had to get pushed back, is we got the John Legend fouls in late, and he wanted a nice piece of change. So, because Pick loved them and always wanted that, you know, Def Jam made that happen. And um, Government Cheese had P and B Rock on it. Mm. What? I don't think. I think somebody else wrote it with him for um, whatever they did. The Buck Wild had the song with him, and then he, we couldn't find the writer, and then the whole thing happened with that. So. Had the pull in days, and somebody else rapping on that too, right? Yeah, my artist Nino Man and Millie's nice. are on there. I'm like, who yeah, is that? That's Nino and that's Millie's. But um, the other the other hook that was on there before days, it was so hard. I guess she was able to, she you know, she did her thing. She nailed it. I think that I I haven't heard her sounding like that in a minute. Nah, uh, she, I, yeah. I loved it. I said somebody coached her through that because she sounded great on that record. All right, well, they say you got to go. All right, well, Ignatius. Kiss, album is out right Hopefully now. Hopefully they going to get me some breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Finish your breakfast, Kiss. Ignatius out right now. Make sure y'all check it out. Beautiful project. Make sure y'all get ready for this Locks album coming after that. Locks documentary. Definitely a tearjerker. And uh, appreciate all the love for D-Block, L-O-X, so raspy. All right. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. It's Jada Kiss.